At this point, we'd like to start this ceremony the way we start all of our rodeos, with the national anthem performed by Lila Moray. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the Thank you very much. It's been a tradition with inductions that we start with a moment of silence for those Hall of Famers that we have lost uh, since we were last together. And this year, we lost Reg Kessler, who had some of the greatest bucking stock that ever was in a rodeo arena, and John Justin, whom we hold very, very close to our heart. So just a moment of silence for those two. Thank you. Now, rather than embarrassing myself by having missed some people as they came in, I would like for all of um, the people who are here who are Hall of Fame inductees to stand up. Or wave your hat. Harry's over here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thanks uh, for, for feeling such a part of our family that, that you come to watch us induct a new class each year. We truly appreciate that. And now, the Chairman of the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame, of, uh, Hall of Fame Board and the Commissioner of Professional Rodeo, Steve Hatchell. Well, good morning, and how about a big round of applause for Pat Hildebrand and the great job today. Thank you, Pat. Well, is this a great day or what? Uh, I might suggest to all of you in the back that we've got some seats over here to my left and to your right. So if you want to come over, we've still got some seats up here. So um, make your way to, to your right and uh, my left. On behalf of the Board of Directors of the PRCA and the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame, we want to thank all of you for coming. This is a marvelous turnout. We thank you so much for your support because it means a lot to us just to have you here today. It's a real celebration for rodeo. And so if you take a moment, if we could all clap for one another. This is an awesome crowd. So let's hear it for all of you. Thank you. One of the fun parts of this job is that every year, passing these out, I get Miss Rodeo America and uh, to help me. And uh, every year, Rihanna Wadhams and her board select someone very, very special. And you say they can't get any better, and they do get better. This year, it's Tara Green from Colorado, Miss Rodeo America. And Tara, if you'd stand, and she'll be helping us with our ceremony today. And also, if you'd say hello to I believe we've got uh, 12 state queens here, Miss Rodeos, and uh, I think they're in the back, and if you all would wave, and thank you for joining us here today, too, ladies. Thank you. 
We appreciate you being such wonderful ambassadors for the sport. Pro Rodeo is doing some wonderful things, and we're doing wonderful things because what we call our friends, corporate partners, people that just make it happen, frankly. We've got wonderful people working in this building, but it doesn't go very far unless we have a lot of friends. And so I'm going to ask you to say hello to a lot of friends who have joined us here today in different roles and in different participation levels. I'd like you to say hello to Chuck Sylvester and Benny Butler, PRCA board members are here today. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Benny. We have Bob Falkenberg, who heads up the Canadian Rodeo Association. Bob, you'd stand. Thank you. What's exciting about this, uh, February 9th through the 11th, there will be a rodeo, U.S. versus Canada, at the Winter Olympics in Salt Lake, Oregon, uh, Salt Lake. And uh, we're having so much fun putting this together. And uh, it will be a real tribute to the sport. It's part of the Arts Festival. And uh, working with the Canadians has just been a joy. It's our best five in each event against the Canadians' best five in each event. And it will be a real celebration for rodeo. would like you to say hello to Harry Vold, a member of the Hall of Fame board and our selection committee. Harry, thank you. Also a member of our, of our Hall of Fame. Berlin Miller, Las Vegas Events, our partner at the National Finals Rodeo. Berlin, thank you, buddy. Thanks for being here. Carolyn Vitor. Carolyn is the head of the WPRA. Carolyn, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Rihanna Wadhams, who heads up Miss Rodeo America. Rihanna, thank you. One of the reasons that we've been able to move ahead with a lot of our projects has been because of our corporate partners. We don't call them sponsors because they go way beyond that as a label. Frankly, they're friends. Please say hello to some special friends who have joined us here today. From Wrangler, Mr. Rodeo himself, Bill Hervey, Louis Russo, and Carl Stressman. Thank you, guys. It's a Wrangler Pro Rodeo Tour, and this year it's the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo. Thank you all. From Copenhagen and the Copenhagen Cup Series and the finales that we have at the MGM and this year in Dallas, October 25 through 28, we have Daryl Barron and Scott Walton. Guys, thank you. From Justin Boots, Mr. Tom Feller, great friend of rodeo. Thank you, Tom. From Original Coors, Donna Keffler. Donna, thank you, and those great daughters of yours, too. Thank you. From Jack Daniels, John Gunn. John, thank you. And from our friends at Original Dodge, and if you saw the write-up on their new truck yesterday in USA Today, you'll see why we're so excited. And their new tagline for what they're doing in a lot of rodeo, a lot of their advertising is grab it by the horns. And if you don't think that's not exciting, Mike Orman and Brent Gibson from Dodge Truck. Thank you, guys. We have two people representing uh, groups that we work with a lot. Cindy Schonholtz heads up, which you might say is our animal welfare group. And anymore in this day and time, this group works very hard. And we have a lot of people who are here who are part of our humane advisory groups. But I would be remiss, and you would be remiss, if you didn't acknowledge the work of two people who work behind the scenes with Cindy to do enormous things. You know that Doc ATN is a big part of this. But we have two people that do wonderful things for us. And this is one of the few times that we get a chance to say thank you to them. So at this time, if you'd say a big thank you to Doug Corey and Bob Fox. Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything you do for us. There are 152 people enshrined in the Hall of Fame here behind you. We're about to induct eight more today. And when you think about the thousands of people that have been part of rodeo over the years. You see that you have to be very, very special to be here. It has been said that this group this year 
is the very heartbeat of rodeo. There's not one person here that you can question their induction into the Hall of Fame. We are thrilled to present these people to you today. Harry Vold and his committee worked very hard to make this group maybe one of the most star-filled group ever in pro, pro rodeo history. Your attendance here today, biggest crowd we've ever had, is a true testimony to the wonderful stature of these people. Thank you. They are very special, and they have made rodeo very special. What we're going to do today is, as we've been doing for the last few years, is we let the videos introduce these people because it's the proper way to discuss what they have done. We only cover a small part of it, but I think you'll see from these videos that this is indeed a group of wonderful people who have made a commitment to rodeo and therefore made rodeo better. And so with that, we would like to start with a video that's an overview of our candidates. Dean? A stroll through the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame, and you'll see names such as Descent, Oscar, Casey Tibbs, Jim Shoulders, Benny Binion, Malcolm Baldridge, Cy Talion, and Larry Mayhem. Names that give the Hall of Fame a majestic feeling of the past and the present. This year, we honor the following inductees who will surely add to that proud and majestic feeling. Inducted into the hall this year in the contract personnel category are Joe Decker, Tom Hadley, and Jerry Olson. Joe Decker. Soon after Joe graduated from high school in 1942, she became involved in rodeo. She was what was known as a ranch girl at the Madison Square Garden Rodeo in 1944 and 46. It was the beginning of a rodeo life that she was involved in for years to come. In 1959, when a group was organizing the NFR to be held in Dallas, Texas, Joe was one of the first to step forward and volunteer her help. She became production coordinator and helped plan the opening ceremonies. At that first ever National Finals Rodeo, Joe led the entry of the grand opening by carrying the U.S. flag into the arena. It was a very special moment in my life, Joe says, one I will always remember. She went on to be named rodeo secretary at six of the following NFRs and was also a timer and flag girl at numerous others. Over the years, Joe worked as rodeo secretary for many stock contractors, Haas Inman, Harry Vold, and Mike Servi, just to name a few. When it came time to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the NFR, once again, Joe stepped forward and helped plan an opening that paid tribute to the first one held in Dallas back in 1959. Joe Decker, truly a member of the great rodeo family. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct Joe Decker into the class of 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Decker. Wouldn't you know I'd be first? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so very much. And thank you for considering me for this honor. Uh, it makes me humble to be with this company. You know, I have such great people over there that are in here with me. This has been part of my life since I was a little girl. But it's people that in the rodeo business that have made it so special for me. The Cowboys were so good to me over the years. I've always considered them my family. And we were, even though we're, they, we were mostly the same age, they called me Mama Jo, and still do. And I want to thank the stock contractors I have worked for. They made my life's work not work at all. It was, it's just been wonderful. 
thanks to my family and my friends and everybody that's come to see me on this special occasion. I have one over here from Clayton, Oklahoma. <laughs> and I'm so pleased that they could come. In fact, I love you, everyone. And I wish I could talk some more, but I'll probably cry. So <laughs> thank you very much. Tom Hadley. Tom says he never really wanted to be a rodeo announcer. He wanted to be a rodeo cowboy. He was, for a short time, around four years' worth. But he started announcing to make a little extra cash to pay his entry fees and found it worked pretty well. Reuben Pointer gave me a job in Lindsay, Oklahoma, for $21, and I booked 10 more rodeos there. I didn't realize it then, but I had embarked on a lifetime career. For over 45 years, Tom announced three generations of rodeo cowboys and cowgirls. He announced at some 6,000 rodeos and has kept a record of every rodeo he has ever worked. Tom has announced just about every facet of rodeo. The National High School Finals, the National College Finals, the Texas Circuit Finals, the Indian National Finals, the Junior Rodeo National Finals, and the 1971, 73, and 1982 NFR. He has announced rodeo in Canada, Mexico, and Cuba, and in some 66 major coliseums and in 33 different states. Tom also became interested in the public relations aspect of rodeo and has been responsible for some of the larger newspapers in the country, moving various rodeo reports and articles to the sports pages. Even though Tom Hadley said at an early age, all I wanted to be was a rodeo cowboy, he really was. He just did it in a different way. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct Tom Hadley into the class of 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Hadley. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe everything I see on television, so don't you believe what you just saw either. I'll make this just as short as I possibly can. I'm very proud to be here, but who wouldn't be proud to be here? With this fine group of people, group already in there and the group that'll follow, many years to come. My daddy came out of Montana in the early 1900s with several uh, loads of horses on a freight train, rode to Cash, Oklahoma with them. That was the Comanche Indian uh, capital of the country. Had a big auction, leased a big ranch there, close to Fort Sill. Met my mother, married her, I came along in 1927. All we knew was cows and horses. That's all our living was. That's all anybody in the country had. That's all we wanted to know. And. Uh, when I was in my early teens, I doctored enough cattle, I rode horseback to my first major rodeo. And there were many, many world champions there that are still in the book, in your PRCA Lodge book, that were there. And somehow I won enough, first money, enough money the first go-round to pay for more than three months of cowboy wages. So it would never be another poor day for me. So I got my sister interested in it. Mother caught her roping calves, me turned them out for her. They put her in the, she put her, my mother put her in the house for 10 full days, wouldn't let her ride horseback, not until we needed to, to work cattle with her. So she kind of wound up liking rodeo. Ran on to an old kid in New Mexico, old boy by the name of Tuffy Cooper. They got married, had kids. They had a desert ranch, and on that desert there wasn't much to do but have kids and rope calves. And they did both of that. Had three kids, they all went to the World Series. Two of them won many world's titles. And now Tuffy and Betty Cooper, are still roping, but they're not still having any kids because they're about my age a little older. <laughs> so you're going down to the, the line. My mother dearly hated rodeos. My sister marrying a cowboy and me being rodeoing. And my brother rode Bronx and roped calves pretty well, but he got interested in basketball more so. Uh, before my mother died, she went to the national finals and I was there working. Roy Cooper won the world champion calf roping, so she told everybody in Lawton, Oklahoma. She had a son that worked the biggest rodeo in the world and a grandson that won it all in the calf roping, the world champion. So I guess she was pretty happy uh, before she passed away. I'm very happy to have my son Mark here with me and his family, my wife Jane and her family, Roy and his family, my father-in-law, Walker White from Mason, Texas, back in the 40s and 50s, raised some of the top cow horses of the United States. And I'm very happy to be here. Hell, anybody would be happy to be here. George Bush would be happy to be here. Now, if Al Gore was here, he'd say, I invented it. 
so it wouldn't work. But I'm happy to be associated with this group of people, and I see so many people that I hadn't seen in 30 years, and believe me, they look the same age, and all I am is just older and slower. Thank you very much. Jerry Olson. Jerry grew up on ranches and was always around horses and cattle. His father was a rancher, a horsebreaker, and rodeo contract reformer. So it came as natural to Jerry, just as it does for a son, Jerry Wayne, who was following in his father's footsteps. In 1950, Jerry, under the direction of his father, started working on a riding act, which he ended up by jumping a running horse into a moving truck. The act was taken on the road and went well. In time, though, they decided that this would be an even better act if it were performed by a Roman riding a team of horses. This was considered at the time, and still is, the only kind of stunt where a person ever managed to stand upright on the backs of two moving horses and jump into the back of a moving truck. An even better and more difficult act using a buffalo was performed in 1954 at Wolf Point, Montana. A few years later, Jerry acquired a buffalo named Sam when he was a six-month-old orphan calf. Jerry worked with Sam daily and taught him skills that were to please rodeo fans for the next eight years. Jerry would ride Sam into the arena and work him in figure eights. Sam would bow, Jerry would dismount, and Sam would crawl on his knees. Tension would build when Jerry would lie down and Sam would put his foot on Jerry's chest. When a trailer was brought into the arena, Jerry would send Sam to the top where the big buffalo would put his two hind feet on a pedestal and raise his front legs as if to wave to the rodeo crowd. Jerry would then get on Sam and ride him down the ramp. The act concluded with Jerry riding Sam to the trailer and jumping the buffalo into it. Jerry also qualified for the 1969 NFR in steer wrestling and was an NFR bullfighter in 1973 but it was his specialty acts that were drawing attention to many of the major rodeos around the country. In 1983, Jerry's act was selected as Contract Act of the Year. Jerry retired in 1991, but his act will be remembered by rodeo fans for years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct Jerry Olson into the class of 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Olson. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here, and I really, I'm not much of a speaker, and I, uh, I uh, feel real great, and if somebody was to ask me at this minute if, uh, how, how I felt, and I'd say I feel so good, I feel sorry for the rest of the world. And that's the truth, I do. But anyway, I uh, I called P Pat Hildebrand about uh, how, how long I should take, and wh I'm not a, sp a speaker nor a speech maker, so she said, just speak from your heart. So that's what I'm going to do. But I got a pretty little heart, so it shouldn't take too long. <laughs> but anyway, I think, in my mind, it's a great honor to be here today but the, the great honor should go to the, to the great ones who, back in 1936, started the Turtle Association. Just think of what, of what they has become of what they started. And the, later it became the, PR, the RCA at a time when they formed a board of directors that represented every aspect of the rodeo business. And, and then as, you know, through work and, and hard work and labor and dedication of some great people that should be honored as a group, the, the whole organization. And then it became the, PR, the, PR, the PRCA. And then their office moved right here to Colorado Springs and got the support of all these great Colorado Spring, Springs people and the Colorado people and and look look at what we've got today through all the dedication and and uh, honor of all the people that made this happen and I I feel that it's a great honor to be here but my, myself but it's a greater honor to to know that these people made the honor possible for us people here 
And then I'd like to thank the the uh, selection board for for selecting me and and giving me the chance to be up here. And the reason that I'm here today is not because of anything special that I did. This is my feeling from the heart that it's the stock contractors, the rodeo committees, the PRC people uh, as a whole, and the especially the the professional the the contract people that elected me give me the privilege to to be their representative as a director on the board two times elected me twice and it was a great honor and i want to thank them especially for letting me serve serve them in that as an, in that category as i as i told you before i'm not much for speaker so i got to stammer a little <laughs> but anyway and i need to you know I got into this business because of my loving mother my and my uh, disciplined fa father and uh, that believes in commitment and and he was a, a great man but a very strong-minded man and when he said something you better listen and we got into the rodeo business when I was about we, he got the idea of going into the rodeo business professionally, and we, he was managing a ranch in in uh, southern North Dakota and, and uh, northern South Dakota. And he, he said, "If you, I got to work in some junior rodeos." He said, "You seem real interested in rodeo." He said, "If you want to commit yourself to to making a living in the rodeo business," he said, "I've got some ideas that might work." Well, about eight, it, we went in. That was when I was about 14 years old, and about four years later, we had a Buffalo Act and the Roman Riding Act, and he came to me and he said, "Well, I believe you held up your commitment, so I think it's time we split up." And he went with the Buffalo, and I went with the horses, and and we had a, a pretty successful life as in, in the rodeo business. And he was, he. he he, he was a strong-minded man and and, and uh, a very disciplined man and he, and I was we did this so he him being the boss and me the grunt <laughs> and well anyway in anyway when I was 18 years old we, we split up and and me being used to a, a a great partner and a great boss I I didn't know if I'd go it alone so I I got me another silent partner and a boss and I married the boss <laughs> and uh, we had a and the boss we, we raised a fine family who was very supportive of the rodeo business and they every one of them was raised on the road they, uh, born and, and raised on the road and uh, due to her credit and everything that she kept me pretty straight when I dwindled off when I got away from being so straight she put up with it and that lasted for it's lasted for 47 years and I'm pretty proud of that <laughs> but but at the same time the people that really are important in this thing besides my family and uh, the, the association and everything is the spectators and the people that made me that made it possible for me to be here today it, and I, I accept this honor in behalf of all the people I, I really feel that you, that you're re receiving the honor instead of me because without you without the spectators and the uh, fine friends and all the people and I mean the f friends I, I've got friends here from all over the country and it just I, it, it kind of hard for me to talk about it because it, I just can't believe that they came like that. But anyway, I really am, I just can't say enough about how far the association has come and, and how great the people in here in Colorado Springs are supporting this great hall and, and things are going so well. And I, I thank this and all the thank yous goes on but I'm going to end this in a little different way than most people think a person like me knowing me would do it. I think that I would thank the good Lord 
for all of this, it would have never been possible. Everything we do is made possible by him. And we, we like to take credit, but if you stop and think, it were, he's the one that makes it all possible. And I want to thank you all that I have received this. I, I, I'm putting that wrong. I want to thank you all that we have received this, and I've had the privilege of, of accepting it for you. And I thank you, and and I really, it's, you just can't believe how good I feel. Inducted into the hall this year in the notable category is Doc Etienne. Myron Doc Etienne grew up in the Los Angeles area where there wasn't much chance to own a horse or live a Western lifestyle. Still, as a young boy, Myron had a fascination for the cowboy and the West. Maybe it was the country music I listened to as a kid, Doc says. Fresh out of high school, Myron left home and joined the Merchant Marines. After about five years at sea, he decided an education was important and spent the time necessary to get a law degree. His love for the Western life, the cowboy, and the rodeo was to become a reality when he took a job in the district attorney's office in Salinas, California. The first thing I did was to check into my new boss's office, Doc says. The second thing I did was go over and get on the rodeo committee. He was elected president of the rodeo committee in 1968 and spent three years at that position. During this time, one of his many accomplishments was to bring the attendance of the Salinas Rodeo to over 50,000 attendees. In addition to the many years Doc spent to make the Salinas Rodeo one of the premier rodeos in the country, Doc has also found and taken the time to advance a rodeo in other ways. He was a founding member and the first president of the Animal Welfare Council, which supports the use of animals in recreation and entertainment and ensures their care and humane treatment. For many years, Doc has been a dedicated leader protecting the sport of rodeo from legislation that might endanger its existence. He has been chairman of the Rodeo Advisory Committee Humane Board since its inception. He has donated numerous hours of his time to support the PRCA Advisory Committee dealing with humane issues. In 1991, Doc received the Standard of the West Award from the Justin Boot Company for his contribution to the sport of rodeo, and today, we're very pleased to induct him into the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. It's the Doc Antians of our sport that continue to make rodeo what it is today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct Doc Etienne into the class of 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, Doc Etienne. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe that you will ever see or hear a more humble person than myself standing here before you today. You know, if you're an outstanding contestant or if you do an outstanding job as a performer, as some of those folks who you've just heard from and many more, at least you have a shot, let's say, at being inducted in the Hall of Fame. In my case, working from the small corner of, of the sport that I've worked in for 30 years, I honestly never thought that what I was doing was significant enough to merit something like this. And, uh, and of course, I knew that I'd been nominated, but I thought, heck, this is just like the Oscars. You get nominated, you don't get, you don't get the Oscar. <laughs> and I, uh, when that was, I just, it was, it was, a thought that just came to my mind when I was told I was uh, nominated and I just completely forgot about it. And as uh, Pat Hildebrand will tell you, when she called to tell me the news, I was absolutely stunned. That's the word, she, absolutely speechless. And I'm practically speechless now, which is unusual for a lawyer. Now, you know, a lot of people have come to me since this news was out, and they said, you know, Doc, you deserve this for all the work that you've done. You really do. You've worked hard. You really deserve it. What those folks don't know is that I have been rewarded a thousand times over, a thousand times over. Outside of my family, the relationships and friendships that are the closest to my heart, 
are those that have come either directly or indirectly from the sport of rodeo. My dearest friends and the most wonderful people are involved in this sport. You cannot find a better group of people as individuals and as a group and those that are involved in, in the sport of rodeo and of course the ranching that supports this sport. So I have a lot of thank yous to, uh, to make here today. First, of course, I want to thank Jack Roddy, uh, who was my sponsor. I want to thank the Board of Trustees and the Selection Committee and that very patient lady, Pat Hildebrand. God, she's patient. <laughs> I want to thank T.J. Walter, who is uh, on the staff. And as T.J. knows from our work together over the years, that I like to think 10 or 20 years ahead when it comes to the sport of rodeo and what's, what's going to happen and how to best deal with it and prepare for the future. I want to thank Cindy Schoenholtz, who's the uh, Animal Welfare Coordinator, who's doing an outstanding job for this association, just as simply outstanding. And I want to thank the members of the Rodeo Advisory Committee, with whom I've worked for many years, and especially Doug Corey, who's been a member of that particular committee from the very beginning and who does, as was already mentioned, some fantastic work on behalf of this association and on behalf of rodeo in general. I want to thank the Board of Directors of the Salinas Rodeo, a number of whom are here today. Uh, that board, and by the way, well, I was president not in 1958, 19, it was 1968, I'm not that old. <laughs> anyway, I, I had the good fortune of being able to serve as president of the Rodeo, that Rodeo. We call it Rodeo in Salinas. We, you, know, you all understand there's Rodeo everywhere else, but at any rate, I had the great fortune of serving as president of the Rodeo for three years, which is unusual because the usual term is two years, but uh, it was a thrill for me at that time in the third year to look around the stand. It's one of the few times I've seen this, and there were people looking for seats. Every single seat at Salinas was occupied, and there were hundreds of people milling around trying to find some place to sit down. That was a thrill. I want to thank my wife Charlene, who has been so patient with my traveling around the country as I've done my thing for the, for, the, for the sport of rodeo in general, and my family who are here, some of them are here, and my many friends, have come, some of whom have come from great distances to be here, and most particularly my law partners, a number of them who have come here from Salinas to celebrate this with me. Now I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, in this uh, induction ceremony. I want to accept this in respect for and in honor of a man by the name of John Burke. Some of you old timers will remember John, but he was a great supporter of rodeo, a great friend of mine, my mentor, one of those wonderful friends I told you about as a result of my being involved in rodeo. He was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 1996. And I uh, hadn't seen much of John the last few years of his life, and I thought it would be a great surprise if I showed up here unannounced to congratulate him. Fifteen minutes before this ceremony, I learned that he was so ill with uh, cancer of the liver that he was not, not able to be here. So I, uh, I just wanted dedicate this in my own little way to John. God bless you, John. Now you'll see John's likeness among the bronzes that are in this, in this uh, building. And as I was walking through the hall yesterday looking at the statues and the artifacts, and I asked myself, if those statues and if those artifacts that are in, this, in the various cabinets could could speak, what would they say to us? What would they talk about? Well, surely they would talk about great rodeos, great performances, great contestants, great performers, contestants like in today's world, Ty Murray, Old Time, Casey Tibbs, and Freckles Brown, Jim Shoulders, and, and uh, dozens and dozens of more, many of whom, of course, are here represented in this, in this hall. I know they would talk about the past, but I also believe that they would express and talk about their concern for the future 
every one of those people who have been so important to the sport of rodeo would want, and I know everyone here wants, that this sport endure so that our children, our children's children, and the children of those children will be able to enjoy the sport of rodeo. A very wise philosopher once said that the only truth is change. And in my 30 years of doing what I've done for the, and with the uh, sport of rodeo, I've seen a tremendous change in the attitudes of the American public as it affects animals in, you, in sport and in, in, in entertainment. The connection between the city dweller and the farm and the ranch is going more remote every day. We live in an urbanized society that's going to be increasingly urbanized, and it is that segment of our society that is going to decide, in the end, the future of this sport. So what is the challenge of the future? I believe the challenge of the future is to be able to perform the events which we perform in rodeo today, keeping the essence of that event and the essence of rodeo, and yet perform and compete in a way that the average American citizen can walk away from that performance without feeling that the animal involved has been abused or treated cruelly. That's the challenge of the future. And that's going to require continuing education of our contestants and our performers. I believe, frankly, it's going to require some rule changes as they presently exist in the rule book if we want this sport to survive the way we want it to. So I leave you with that thought, and I leave you with a heart filled so filled with thanks that I really can't articulate it accurately or adequately, thank you all so much. Inducted into the hall this year in the category of steer wrestling is C.R. Boucher. His many friends refer to him as the great American cowboy. He's one of the most respected men in the world of rodeo. For a man that made rodeo his life's work, Boucher got off to a late start compared to today's cowboys. I really never even went to a rodeo until I was almost out of high school, CR said. After graduating from high school, I went to Montana State to play football, but I left after one season with a friend who wanted to try his hand at rodeoing. The sport and life of a cowboy attracted CR, and he soon was competing full-time. Boucher rode bulls for a while and wrestled steers, but he decided to give up bull riding to concentrate on bulldogging full-time. He worked hard and the work paid off with a world championship in 1964. During his time, CR worked alongside just about all of the great ones in the sport of rodeo. He had a hand in training many of them at his home camp. Among the many who trained under the watchful eye of Boucher was world champion Larry Mahan. Along about 1959, CR went to work for Elra Butler. Elra was very good to me over the years and gave me the opportunity to rodeo and work for a great rodeo family. It was people like Elra Butler who gave me the opportunity to become a world champion. At the 1964 NFR in Los Angeles, entering the final round, 33-year-old C.R. Boucher led John W. Jones by 2.7 seconds in the average race. Whoever finished higher in the average would walk away with a gold buckle. CR's gold buckle has always been worn with great pride. As much as the sport may have changed over the years, CR Boucher has remained the same. He epitomizes the rugged individualism that is the rodeo cowboy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct CR Boucher into the class of 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, C.R. Boucher. Thank you. Well, this is wonderful to be put in this great hall, be with people that I regard as my friends, that I rodeoed with when I started. And then I put in here with people I looked up to that were great friends of mine, Bill Linderman, Dale Smith, Clem McSpadden, Bill Cody Smith, Buster Ivory, 
Jack Rowdy, but I had to look up to Jack Rowdy. The son of a gun was taller than me. And, Jack, you promised me a John Deere cap when you and Dale caught me out in that hayfield ten years ago, and I still don't have it. I really never got to know Doc from Salinas too well. It was overlap Cheyenne, and I was always there contesting or labor listing or something. And I remember one day a uh, rodeo cowboy, Bill Federson, he called there from Salinas, and he said, boy, he said, uh, these steers are a little bit big. He said, they're, old, they're, they're loading them with the elephant hooks. And I said, man, I said, I better stay here, Cheyenne. I'm having enough trouble trying to get one bedded down here. They used to give the awards there at Denver, and uh, I never was too much on suits and stuff, but uh, Tater and Joe got a hold of me, and... Uh, Decided I'd better put on one of Tater's suits to get my saddle and stuff, and I wish I could still wear it today. Tater's got littler and I got fatter. <laughs> I'd like to uh, acknowledge Aubrey Rankin for keeping me on a great horse at Duke. Aubrey was killed hazing for me at Dallas, Texas at a rodeo. Eugene Weekly whom I, uh, oh, we was 18 years together, rode on down the road and picked up bucking horses for Benny's granddad. Uh, Fred Rule, who was a veterinarian there for uh, Butler's, and uh, still is, and uh, Fred used to bail in there and go with us once in a while and enter the bulldog. And, and then I'd like to thank Howard Harris, Buster, and June Ivory for teaching me about setting the stock at the NFR when I run the buck and shoots there one year. And then Elry Butler's and family for putting up with me all them years. I picked up bucking horses for them for 27 years, and uh, there was Elry, Jigs, Benny, Benny's mother, Una, who was a very wonderful person. She done all the work, kept track of everything. And then uh, Benny's sisters, they were just about like Benny when I was there, little old kids. Now they're all secretaries. And uh, I want to thank Wilma Landy, her daughter Vicki, her granddaughter Allie, for giving me a wonderful place to live. And I want to thank everyone that came here today to help me celebrate this day. Thank you. Where's the committee? Inducted into the hall this year in the team roping category is Les Hurtis. Les started roping back in 1943 when he traded a calf for an old rope horse. For about 15 years, he toyed with roping, going mostly to California rodeos. It wasn't until Les, his horse Ezard, and Al Hooper got together that he went right to the top. In the spring of 1960, his roping partner at the time didn't want to go to Arizona and suggested he hook up with a roper named Hooper. Les did, and they won first place at Phoenix. Together, they won the 1962 and 1963 NFR Team Roping Average Competition. And that same year of 1963, Les also won the World Champion Team Roper title. Les could have very easily won the 1961 World, but his partner Hooper was in the lead, and Les was right behind. Instead of splitting up so they both would have a shot, they stayed together to give Hooper the best shot of the title. It worked, and Hooper won. Then, in 1963, Les had the best shot. They stayed together again, and Les won. They were true roping partners. In later years, Les and the other old-timers competed in the California Dally Team Roping Championship at Oakdale. Their worn faces would reveal the years of hard work they had endured. But it also kept us young inside, Les would say, where it counts the most. Curtis' cracked and chapped hands would shake and twitch in older years, but his humor and strength were always those of a champion.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct Les Hurtis into the class of 2001 and here to accept is his widow, Frances Hurtis. Frances. Well, I wish Les was here to make this speech, but anyway, my family and I want to thank the Commissioner Steve Hatchell, the Board of Directors, the Board of Trustees for this great honor. Thank you, Pat Hildebrand, for your communication and all the hard work making this event come together. Les was very dedicated to the sport of rodeo. Went on to be a world champion in team roping in 1963. Those of you who knew Les, he was just an ordinary man of great values and genuine. We are of the third generation of rodeo cowboys. My son, Ed, four grandsons, Grant, Kent, Lakin, Case, all into rodeo, following in their grandpa's footsteps, hoping to be world champions. Les is up there with his roping friends, probably in the practice arena, riding his best horse. Being congratulated, I know he's looking down with a warm smile a firm handshake and a great big thank you. Also, here today is some of Les's rope and friends, Julia Sposky, who went on to the national finals in Los Angeles and won the NFR in 1962. Don McBride, who Les started out in rodeo in the early 40s. There is Dave Machado, Wayne Lyle, they are all here to help us celebrate this special occasion. And I want to thank our many friends who came here from far to help us celebrate this special event. It doesn't get any better than this. Inducted into the hall this year in the saddle brawn category is Guy Weeks. Guy could have been here in various rodeo categories. He was a top calf roper, bareback rider, and bronc rider. At the early age of six, he had this little black pony and could rope like a much older cowboy. When he got a little older, he became a top jockey until his weight got a little heavy, and he decided he wanted to be a bronc rider. It is as a world champion bronc rider that he joins us here today. He seemed to win right from the start. He was a natural. It wasn't long until other bronc riders hoped they could outdraw Guy Weeks because he was getting hard to beat. Even when he was just a kid, 16 or 17 years old, he was a tough contender, riding the tough ones he would draw. During the late 1950s and early 1960s, Guy Weeks was a name to be reckoned with. In 1963, he won the World Saddle Braun Championship and was runner-up to the all-round champion. Even though his father had always wanted Guy to be a champion roper, it was his world championship as a bronc rider that he was most proud of. Guy's friendly personality made everyone seem to like him right from the start. He was, and still is, one of the most popular cowboys of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame Board of Directors is proud to induct Mr. Guy Weeks into the class of 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Guy Weeks. Well, I really had not got any speech made up, so I'll use some that I've heard. <laughs> I heard Bushbaum say that the best part of this whole thing was the rodeo, and this is just the icing on the cake. I heard Acreage say one time, he wasn't much of a speaker, he wouldn't be getting him that trophy for being the champion bareback rider. <laughs> but I just want to thank everybody that's come. I have cousins that showed up that I didn't know was coming, nephew and brother-in-law, and I want to thank Edna Turnbow for nominating and putting my name in. And 
him. Uh, everyone else, thank my wife for putting up with me for 51 years. That's a pretty good tour. <laughs> 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 I think the the board probably decided that Edna wasn't going to quit putting my name in. They wasn't going to get rid of me unless they put me in. Hell, I got news for them. I'm going to be back anyway, <laughs> as well as I've been treated. <laughs> and uh, as far as that bronc riding was. Me and Bud Watson went to a little rodeo and post. We just got one head. He got one bull and I got one bareback horse. He said, why don't we ride broncs at Seymour? I said, they'll get one every day. I said, well, I guess we can. Well, I ended up in the Bronx riding in some way he forgot to get entered. Uh, I guess that's really what started my bronc riding. And I just want to thank everybody. A lot of people that has come here, and guys that I rodeoed with and, and knew for this deal, and I want to thank them for coming. But I really know why they come. They come to see Joe Decker. <laughs> and I just want to thank everybody and the board and and everything, and uh, I won't take up too much more time. Thank you. <laughs>
and they represented 96 world titles. People such as Roy Cooper, Ty Murray, Jim Shoulders. It was a great function. We wanted to honor those people who are world champions, the best of the best. In order to make that happen, Colorado Springs and the people here said, we can make it happen for you. We're dedicated to your success. We didn't just call it the World Champions Pavilion. We put a name on it. Because there's a gentleman here who, with his kind consideration, support, and his love of rodeo, has made this facility possible, these half-sized bronzes, of which they will depict all of the events in rodeo, and this new building. And we wanted to give it a name, and we did. And I know he's here today, and if he'd stand, and if you would honor him as well, Mr. Hal Littrell from the Pikes Peak or Bust Rodeo, it's now the Hal Littrell World Champions Pavilion. Hal. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. And the reason that uh, we say that is following this, we want you to go over, see the pavilion. We still have a lot of things to do in it. But when it's completed, all of the world champions over the time will be on granite blocks inside uh, the pavilion. And it's a facility that this community has already said we will embrace and we want to use it. And when you're there, you'll see the gardens, you'll see Pikes Peak in a distance, and it extends our reach with rodeo. So thanks to Hal, the Ackerman Trust, the El Pomar Foundation for making this a reality, and we want you to feel to come back and see this often because this is your home. I'd like to take this time to thank the Hall of Fame staff, the PRCA staff, for a job well done. And before we conclu conclude, if I could ask all of you to rise and give one giant celebratory clap for the class of 2001 to the Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. Thank you for joining us today. inductees and we congratulate them as they take their place among the previous honorees.